Hey, welcome back. So water is a classic example of a hydrogen bonding compound. In fact, water's really got it made because it's got the ability to uh, donate two hydrogen bonds and the ability to receive two hydrogen bonds. So here's a water molecule right here. So it's got two lone pairs that it can uh, bond to another hydrogen on another water. And it's got two hydrogens that it can donate uh, hydrogen bonds to two other water molecules. So it can actually bond to four other things through hydrogen bonding. And this gives water all sorts of cool properties. So we know it's got an exceptionally high boiling point. We know that it's viscous, so the molecules stick together pretty well. We can see the surface tension, the skin on the top of water, that meniscus when we're using a burette, let's say, is all from that extremely strong hydrogen bonding going on in water. Let me go ahead and show you a graph over the next page, and we'll see why water is pretty darn weird. So this is a graph of the boiling point temperature, so I'm sorry I didn't write boiling point here, uh, versus the molar mass. And what is this really trying to show? Well, we're looking at group six. So group six of the periodic table is things that like, you know, have oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium in. And uh, if you go ahead and you look at this graph, you can see it looks like a straight line, right? So like so. In fact, you might say, well, okay, what is this trying to show? Well, the boiling point tends to go up as the molar mass goes up. And why is that? Well, remember your London dispersion forces. So your London forces are proportional to the number of electrons, uh, which is normally just proportional to the molar mass. So we would expect, right, as things get heavier, right, they uh, have a higher London force. And so that means the molecules stick together even more, so they have a higher boiling point. It takes more energy to boil them. And if you look at water, right, you can see water is way off base, right? Water should be all the way down here, right? So if I go ahead and estimate water's boiling point, right, it should boil at about minus 90 degrees Celsius. But instead, we know it boils at about 100 degrees Celsius. So it's boiling about 190 degrees much higher than it should. And the reason for that is that water has that incredibly strong intermolecular force called the hydrogen bond. And those water molecules, right, uh, they don't just have those wimpy little London dispersion forces between them, right? They have those incredibly strong hydrogen bonds that are forming that network that makes it really hard to boil, right? It makes it really hard to separate those molecules because they're just sticking together like crazy. So those are my intermolecular forces, my hydrogen bonds between my individual molecules. And that extra attraction, right, is keeping them together and meaning that you've got to supply a whole heck of a lot more energy, right? You got to boil at a much higher temperature in the case of water than you do any of these other ones. You might say, well, what about the other hydrogen compounds? So uh, let's go ahead and draw those up. So if I look at uh, the group four hydride, so carbon, silicon, germanium, and tin, we can see that roughly as you go down the as you go down the groups, right, to uh, the second period, the third period, the fourth period, the fifth period, the molecules get heavier, their London dispersion forces get stronger, and the boiling point goes up. You can see that pretty well. And if you look at uh, group five that has nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, arsenic, and antimony in, you can see it's roughly the same trend, right? So as the molecules get heavier, as they get bigger, as they have more electrons, right, the boiling point tends to increase. So that's telling you that the intermolecular forces increase. But if you look at the first item, right, nitrogen, so NH3 is ammonia, it's much higher than it should be. The same with group seven, the halogens. So if you look at the halogens, HCl, HBr, HI, there's that rough increase. The very first member is way higher than it should be. And so why are these so incredibly high? And the answer is they all exhibit hydrogen bonding. So because of that, they have a much greater intermolecular force holding them together. And uh, it's making it much, much harder to pull them apart and boil. So the boiling point has to increase like crazy. And if you take something like, you know, NH3, which is ammonia, right? You've got the two things you need for a hydrogen bond. You've got the hydrogen attached to a very electronegative atom, and you've got the lone pair on a very electronegative atom. So these guys can stick together like crazy. So there's another ammonia molecule down there, and uh, there's the lone pair. And so that hydrogen bond is that interaction between the hydrogen on the nitrogen of one molecule and the lone pair on the nitrogen of another. And remember, it's an intermolecular interaction, so it's between two molecules. So don't ever, ever point to this bond here and say it's a hydrogen bond, right? That's crazy talk. The hydrogen bond is between two molecules, and so it's holding them together, and in this case, it's making it a lot harder to boil than you'd expect. Pretty awesome, huh?